energy and in particular energy transfers are the topic of today's video and these are the objectives for the video. So we're going to be describing how jobs get done using an energy model where energy is transferred from one store to the start at the start to another at the end. And the first type of energy that you need to know about is kinetic energy, that's the energy of movement. The second is thermal energy, which is also known as heat energy, and I'll be using both terms in this video. Then we have light energy, sound energy, and electrical energy. And all of those are moving energies. Um, so then we have our energy stores, which are potential energies. So the first is gravitational potential, which is the energy things have because they're up high. And we sometimes abbreviate that to GPE. Now the second type of potential energy is elastic potential energy. That's like when you pull back an elastic band or a spring or you compress something. And again, we abbreviate that to EPE. Our next form of energy is chemical energy. So that's the form that energy is stored in, in a battery or in your food. And then finally, and the one that you don't really need to know about is nuclear energy. And that's what powers atom bombs. Um, but we don't need to know about that in year seven. So we're going to look at how the energy depends on its speed, temperature, height, and whether it's stretched or compressed. So first of all, speed. Speed affects the kinetic energy. So if something's at higher speed, it's got more kinetic energy. Temperature affects the thermal energy. So if it's hotter, it's got more thermal energy. Height affects the gravitational potential energy, or GPE. The higher something is, the more GPE it has. And if you stretch or compress something, that affects its elastic potential energy, EPE. So when energy is transferred, the total is conserved, but some energy is dissipated, reducing the total energy. That's something we call the principle of conservation of energy, and it's one of the most important rules in the whole of physics, so make sure you remember it. Principle of conservation of energy says that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form into another. For example, changing from chemical energy into kinetic energy. So when you move, you're using the chemical energy stored in your body and it's changing into kinetic energy. So energy cannot be created or destroyed. We can't create new energy. We can't destroy energy. We can only change what form it's in. You need to be able to draw diagrams showing these changes between energy. So we're going to start with the TV. It's an example everyone knows. And the input into a TV is electrical energy. We get it from our main supply. And that's changed mostly into light energy and into sound energy. And that's what we want. That's how we enjoy our TV programs. But it also produced is some heat energy, which is why your TV set is getting warm at the back. If we look then at a falling ball, we can see that as it falls, it starts off with gravitational potential energy, it's high up, so we start with GPE, and that changes into kinetic energy. And there'll also be some waste energy as heat, although there won't be so much that you can feel it. In our next example, that's a catapult. So we're looking at a elast an elastic band that's been pulled back, ready to fire a missile. And you see, as the elastic band stretched, it's got elastic potential energy, which is transferred into the kinetic energy of the missile and the band. And again, some heat is released. Our final example is in a circuit. And we've got a simple circuit here with a battery and an LED. And so as I connect up, the batteries, which have chemical energy to the LED, electrical energy flows around and that's converted by the LED into light. Again, heat energy is produced and if I put too high energy through the LED, we can actually feel that heat energy. So, what's going on? We need to be able to calculate how much of the energy that goes into something is useful and how much is wasted or dissipated given values of input and output energies. So if we look at that circuit that we were just looking at, if we say that the batteries are supplying 10 joules of energy, joule is the unit of energy, 
the battery supplies 10 joules of energy, but only say eight joules of that is going to turn into useful light energy. So our LED is producing eight joules of useful light energy. So if we need to say what our useful energy is, that's just what the amount of light is. So that useful energy is eight joules. And the waste energy can be calculated as the difference between the amount of energy that went in and the useful energy out. So we do 10 minus eight, which gives us two joules of waste energy. And that energy is gonna be wasted in the form of heat or thermal energy. If we look at another example, slightly more complicated, a TV. So TV gets its energy supply from the electrical supply. So let's say it uses 100 joules of energy. So for 100 joules of energy, maybe 60 joules of that energy is output as light. And maybe another 20 joules as sound. So to work out the total useful output of our TV, we need to add together the light output and the sound output. So 20 plus 60, and that gives us a total of 80 joules. Then to work out the waste energy, we take our input energy and subtract the useful output. So we need to do 100 minus 80, which gives us 20 joules. And again, that waste energy is mostly going to be heat or thermal energy. So we now need to look at how energy is wasted in different situations. Here we see a ball rolling, but it stops. Where's its kinetic energy gone to? Well, when you've got things with moving parts, those parts rub together and we get the force of friction. It's like when you rub your hands together, there's friction between them. And the effect of that is it makes them warm. So friction, creates heat energy or rather it turns the kinetic energy of the moving thing into heat energy where does that heat energy go well it moves out into the surrounding area now you might think but what about light energy or what about sound energy well other forms of energy are often movements of particles, movements of electrons in the case of electrical energy. So all of those different movements are gonna have some friction involved. And that means that we reduce the amount of energy. So the, or the amount of energy gets turned into heat. So we always have that situation where the energy loss is through friction between moving particles, moving parts, turning it into heat, and then that's dissipated or spread out into the surroundings. Thank you for watching. If you need to go back and re review anything, please do so. Look at the links below for some more ideas of where you can find out information on this topic.